Hi everyone, my name is Amor Henderson and I'm an account manager at Prodigy Learning based in Sydney. We're a Microsoft partner that work across Australia to help schools, universities and TAFEs realise their digital skills strategies. And I've been fortunate to work with so many of these wonderful organisations over the past couple of years who are really leading the way in Microsoft certifications in Australia. This edutech session is focused on coding in Minecraft, which is an immersive and engaging computer science credentialing program. I'm thrilled to bring this session to you as we launch coding in Minecraft here in Australia after it took its first steps overseas. I will be joined today in this session by Peter Doherty, our Coding in Minecraft Product Manager, Microsoft Certified Trainer and former lecturer for over 15 years. So just a bit about Prodigy Learning then before we jump into Coding in Minecraft. Prodigy Learning are a leading player in the training and certification industry and is the developer of Coding in Minecraft. With over 20 years of experience in the certifications business, Prodigy has a strong ethos of providing digital skills through industry certification. We have extensive partnerships with Microsoft and other vendors in the IT space and our Microsoft Global Training Partner. Prodigy Learning is headquartered in Ireland and have offices in the UK, the US and of course here in Australia. Our main goal here in Australia is to really help organisations close the digital skills gap that exists and skill Australians across the country for the jobs of today, but also the jobs of the future. So you may have noticed over the past few years that the computer science curriculum has moved from being mostly information communication technology focused with you know, a greater emphasis on application usage to include more computer science focused curriculum with an emphasis on coding. And we've seen that here locally with the rollout of the Australian Digital Technologies curriculum. Everyone realizes that there are you know, more and more jobs requiring those coding skills, which is why it's hugely important that we give students the opportunity to develop those skills um, from an early age. I'm sure you would all agree with me though that the ICT curriculum, which focuses more on application usage and um, through Microsoft Office Specialist and, and other applications, is still hugely important. Um, after all, Microsoft Office skills are frequently appearing in various lists of you know, the most sought after employability skills. However, with the rapid growing of technology and how technology is integrated into every aspect of our daily lives, having those coding skills are more and more sought after in the job market. And you can see there here in Australia, computer programming is amongst the top 10 skills demanded in ICT job postings across the country. This curriculum transition, of course, brings a number of challenges. So globally, an ICT-focused curriculum rather than computer science-focused curriculum has resulted in you know, a skills gap. Many educators are being presented with challenges of delivering an engaging computer science curriculum with little or no computer science background, which we realise, of course, is a huge challenge for all those involved. So how can we overcome those challenges? When developing coding in Minecraft, all of these factors were taken into consideration so that we could provide easy to teach concepts that will keep students interested and engaged whilst they're learning, you know, skills, soft skills such as collaboration and teamwork, as well as, of course, those important coding skills. In a way that students recognize and understand to motivate them in the classroom and beyond. So with that in mind, I will now hand over to Peter, who will bring you through the coding in Minecraft solution that addresses the common roadblocks. Peter, over to you. Thanks, Emer. Hi, everyone. I am Peter Doherty, the product manager for coding in Minecraft. Before we delve into coding in Minecraft, I want to tell you the story of how I ended up here today and the story of how coding in Minecraft came to be. I've been a lecturer in further and higher education in the UK since 2003 in one of the top five colleges in the UK. 
I'm passionate about vendor certifications and I've embedded the full suite of CertiPort certifications in the curriculum and I've been a Microsoft certified trainer for over 15 years. In 2012, I founded Coder Dojo Belfast, which is a volunteer led coding club for kids aged 6 to 16, where we have around 120 kids every Saturday morning involved in various coding activities. In 2017, I was privileged enough to attend some training by the Minecraft Education Edition team to be awarded the status of Minecraft Certified Trainer. This allows me to deliver Microsoft curriculum to upskill educators and Microsoft partners in Minecraft Education Edition. Since then, I've been delivering training to fellow educators and Microsoft partners in the UK, Europe, Australia and the USA. In 2018, I've been given the recognition of being a global Minecraft mentor by the Minecraft team. This small global community is very active in encouraging the use of Minecraft Education Edition in the classroom. The closed out group meet virtually to support the Minecraft community. Minecraft is the 12th most popular game of all time. The number one most viewed game on YouTube and 51% and of US children aged 9 to 11 play Minecraft already. We can take this popular game and bring it into your classroom to utilize the power of its immersive environment as another tool in our teaching. Minecraft Education Edition is a version of the game from Microsoft designed for use in education, whether in the classroom or at home. It provides several features to enable Minecraft to be used in a safe and effective manner in education. I started to use Minecraft within Coder Dojo Belfast since shortly after its inception in 2013. I'll admit it was initially due to the pester power of the kids and their creativity and eagerness to mod or modify the game, which led me to look into it further and to introduce it as an activity. We have been using other tools such as Scratch and App Inventor to explore coding with the kids aged 6 to 16, but kids wanted to learn how to mod Minecraft as that was a buzz in the time. Minecraft provides four key pillars within the area of game-based learning. Student engagement, it's a game that the students love playing, so why not bring it into your classroom and use it as a learning tool? Collaboration, Minecraft allows students to join together in virtual worlds and collaborate on tasks, whether those tasks are building structures or solving a challenge together. Creative exploration, there is no manual for Minecraft, the only limit is the player's imagination. People learn naturally through a combination of observation, trial and error, and play-based practice. Minecraft is a safe sandbox environment for creative exploration in which students can overcome their fear of failure and learn. Minecraft can help educators create an inclusive classroom where every student is empowered to explore a world of learning and because Minecraft is essentially an open canvas, students are able to express themselves and their ideas in unique ways. And finally, tangible learning outcomes. One of the great features of the education edition of Minecraft is that students can perform learning activities and assessment tasks in the game and provide evidence for assessment. This leads me to introduce coding in Minecraft. Coding in Minecraft is a Credentials program with supporting curriculum designed to teach computer science and coding using Minecraft Education Edition. The credentials prove the students' coding skills and are fun for the students to achieve. As you can see, the pathway is comprised of several credentials, each with supporting curriculum. The first three credentials, Introduction, Intermediate and Advanced, take approximately 20 hours each to deliver, therefore 60 hours for all three in the pathway. This does vary depending on the age or grade of the students. Included with these credentials is a complete curriculum package, which I will detail further shortly. The first three credentials are teacher assessed by way of students submitting evidence of their assessments via our online platform. The credential pathway is ideally suited for use with kids aged 10 to 16, either as a single credential in an academic year or all three in a single year if time permits. The pathway starts with the introduction to coding using MakeCode credential. This credential uses Microsoft MakeCode, which is a block-based coding language. If you're not familiar with block-based coding, we will take a look in a few slides time. Block-based coding is an ideal environment for students to learn core computer science and coding concepts, such as variables, 
iteration and selection. Using block-based coding to grasp these concepts rather than text-based coding such as JavaScript enables the students to learn the concepts without the pitfalls of making syntax mistakes. The introduction credential heavily focuses on collaboration. As such, we have included a digital citizenship lesson early on to provide students with the concepts of what it takes to work together effectively. The second credential in the pathway is the intermediate coding using micro credential. This credential continues the use of block-based coding into more advanced coding concepts and focuses on ensuring that the core computer science and coding concepts are understood by students. My favorite feature of Microsoft Make Code is the ability to transition between block-based coding and text-based coding in either JavaScript or Python. For the advanced level, students can choose to complete it either in either text-based language of JavaScript or Python. JavaScript is one of the most widespread used languages and is a skill in high demand. It's used on almost all websites. Python is a great language for education, but it's also heavily used in the world of artificial intelligence. Therefore, the choice is up to you and your students. There is no difference in curriculum between the JavaScript and Python pathways, just a different language. Finally, students can take the capstone credential exam, which covers the skills learned in all three credential levels. This is a proctored online exam taken through our portal. Upon successful completion of each of these credentials, a certificate and digital badge is awarded to the students. Coding in Minecraft is a perfect on-ramp for students to continue their learning on their CS journey. Each of the three credentials, Introduction, Intermediate and Advanced, have a comprehensive, easy-to-teach student-led curriculum. Students are provided with a Minecraft world which they can explore and interact with characters to perform learning activities and assessments. Each credential comprises of, of eight lessons with all learning taking place immersed in the Minecraft world. The lessons are flexible and can be easily broken up to fit whatever timetable you have, whether you want to use it for 30 minutes per week over the whole year or spend the whole week using it. It's up to you. The lessons have a series of learning activities to explore a concept with some theory and some practical application and an assessment at the end of the lesson. Students progress through the world learning at their own pace. Educators only need to facilitate the students learning. The intermediate and advanced cred level credentials start with a quick start lesson should you wish to start students at those levels without completing the earlier credentials. The assessment at the end of each lesson is assessed using evidence-based assessments. Students submit pictures of their completed assessment to our online portal, where the educator can then review and grade. In this process, there is a formative feedback mechanism. Should a student submit evidence which does not meet the grading criteria, they can resubmit and the teacher can provide feedback to the student through the portal. The objective is that all students will complete the evidence-based credentials, just some may require a bit more feedback and support from their teacher and or peers. Once an educator has graded all lessons for a credential as meeting the grading criteria, the student is automatically awarded a certificate and digital badge. This rewards their learning and encourages them to continue. The credentials are standards aligned to the CSTA standards and several global standards therefore are an ideal option to provide a standards aligned curriculum to your students. You don't have to be an expert in coding to teach coding in Minecraft. Because students are so familiar with Minecraft, they are at ease with navigating through the environment. Teachers can facilitate their students' progress without being a subject matter expert. The lessons have a series of learning activities to explore a concept with some theory and practical application and an assessment at the end of the lesson. As mentioned, students progress through the world learning at their own pace. Educators need to only facilitate the students' learning. They do not need to be Minecraft or computer science or coding experts. There's extensive instructor resources and onboarding provided with coding in Minecraft. We will detail these later. We are extremely proud to announce that earlier this month, Coding in Minecraft was named as a winner of the E-Assessment Awards 2021 Best Formative Assessment category. The International E-Assessment Awards seek to showcase globally the very best practice, research and innovation in testing and assessment, 
where the use of technology has enabled transformation, improved outcomes and enhanced learning and teaching. The judges comment that the coding in Minecraft engages students in game-based learning in a very exciting way. Coding in Minecraft is a credential and curriculum which uses Minecraft Education Edition. Minecraft Education Edition is a special version of Minecraft designed specifically for use in the classroom and provides several features to ensure effective usage in the classroom, such as easy and secure collaboration and easy logon. You need to have Minecraft Education Edition licenses to use coding in Minecraft. Licenses are not included. You probably are already licensed for Minecraft Education Edition, however, depending on which Microsoft license your school has. It comes with the M365 Education A3 or A5 license. Ask your IT administrator which license you have. If you do not have one of these licenses, you can purchase a license at a cost of only a few dollars per student per year by contacting your Microsoft license reseller. The license allows a student to use Minecraft Education Edition in the classroom and at home. As mentioned earlier, coding in Minecraft's introduction and intermediate courses use Microsoft Make Code to help beginning students become familiar with the basic coding concepts. Make Code uses simple block based coding to help students quickly and easily assemble functional code in an easy to use interface, making it an ideal tool to teach beginning coders of all ages. The image shows the Code Builder component, which is part of Minecraft Education Edition. Using the blocks of code in Make Code, we can control our agent, the character you see on screen. The agent is an, is an assistant we control via code and it can perform various tasks in the game, such as building structures. In this example, we have coded the agent to create a fenced pen where we could place our animals. Make Code's feature of being able to move between block based and text based coding is the most exciting feature of Make Code for me. This can allow students to use block based coding to fully understand the logic of what they are creating in code and then transition to the text based equivalent and progress their knowledge. Text based coding is using the advanced level credentials and, is an, and in this example, using JavaScript, we've used some JavaScript to let the player know when they are walking on ice and warm them. Once they're familiar with text-based coding, students will have the core competencies to make the transition to learning more languages or earning industry-recognized coding certifications from Microsoft. The introduction, intermediate and advanced credentials are teacher assessed using formative evidence-based assessment. Students complete lessons and assessments in the Minecraft world and submit their evidence for grading through our Azure hosted online portal. As mentioned earlier, educators can provide formative feedback and grade student submissions via the portal. On the left hand side of this slide, we can see a screen capture um, of a student uploading their evidence. A series of screen grabs or pictures evidence in their submission is the usual evidence for an assessment. Moving to the screen capture on the right, once a student has submitted the submission, will be in a queue for educators to assess. They can assess when they choose either on demand, at the end of a lesson, once a week, whatever suits. To assess, educators are provided with comprehensive examples of correct submissions in the instructor resources. For those with little or no coding experience, this grading can be as simple as comparing two pictures. The educator can mark the submission as successful, and in which case the submission is locked and can no longer be amended, or the educator can mark it as not successful, and in which case, the student can resubmit further evidence for regrading. In either instance, the educator can provide feedback to the student, either positive reinforcement or suggestions for improvement. The capstone credential is a credential which covers the objectives of the introduction, intermediate and advanced credential and enables the students to prove their coding skills. The exam is taken through our online student portal and is proctored by the educator. In the 50 minute 30 question exam, questions take the format of either multiple choice or drag and drop. Upon completion of the exam, students are presented with a score report detailing their strengths and weaknesses in the objective domain. The capstone credential covers the contents from the three micro credentials, introduction, intermediate and advanced, 
and is broken down into three different objective domains, designing and, de and developing algorithms, coding and block-based coding using MakeCode, and coding and text-based coding using JavaScript or Python. The exam comprises of 30 multiple choice and drag and drop questions, which students have 50 minutes to complete and must achieve a, a score of 70% to pass. Should they not be successful first time, they can reset. Full objective domains and sample questions can be obtained on codingcredentials.com. The capstone credential or exam is recommended for kids aged 14 to 16. Immediately upon passing the exam or being awarded a credential by a teacher, the students are, are presented with an online digital certificate. The example on screen is a capstone credential certificate which proves their skills in the objective domain. Free comprehensive course outlines are available to save you time and help you get your program rolling. Each credential has an associated scheme of work and each lesson has a comprehensive series of lesson plans, including answer keys for all assessments. For programs that need a, a viable program now, we also offer optional professional development to really accelerate the launch of your new coding and, and Minecraft program at an additional cost. A free demo of coding and Minecraft is available on our website. Simply go to codingcredentials.com, scroll to the bottom of the screen and fill out the form and you will immediately be sent an email with further instructions. If you don't receive the email, please check your spam filter. Coding in Minecraft has been used in classrooms around the world for several years now. We've had magnificent, magnificent feedback from both educators and students, a few of which are on screen now. And I'll pause for a second for you to take a little read. Thank you for attending the session. I hope it was beneficial and you want to use coding in Minecraft with your students to provide an engaging computer science curriculum. Should you require any further information, please take a look at our website, codingcredentials.com, and remember to sign up for your free demo there, or drop Emer or myself an email.